The first time I noticed how intensely Sam looked at me, I was 16. My mother had married him a year earlier, and our new life together as a family was supposed to be perfect. Sam was warm and charming, someone who seemed to fill the void left by my biological father effortlessly. Mom adored him, and he treated her like a queen. To the outside world, we were a picture-perfect family. But behind closed doors, the air around Sam began to shift in subtle, unsettling ways. At first, I told myself I was imagining things. The long stares when he thought no one noticed, or how his conversations with me always felt too personal. He wasn't mean, far from it. He'd often compliment me, call me his little girl, and say he was lucky to be part of my life. I knew I was supposed to find comfort in those words, but instead, they left me uneasy. By the time I turned 18, the compliments became more frequent and bolder. You're really growing into a beautiful woman, you know? He'd say, his voice a little too soft. He'd comment on my clothes, the way my hair fell over my shoulders, and once even hinted that I shouldn't be surprised if boys couldn't resist me. I laughed it off at first, thinking maybe he was just awkwardly trying to be supportive. But the way his eyes lingered told me that his words carried something heavier than just fatherly pride. Then there was the incident on my high school graduation night. Mom had gone to bed early, exhausted from the celebrations. I stayed downstairs with Sam, talking in the living room. I was wearing a dress that hugged me a bit tighter than usual, and as I sat on the couch, I caught him watching me. Not in a casual way, but like he was taking mental notes of every curve and detail. You look just like your mother when she was your age, he said quietly, breaking the silence. I didn't know what to say to that. His words felt like they carried some hidden meaning I wasn't ready to unpack. The conversation drifted into strange waters as he started reminiscing about his younger days, how he met mom, and how things had been complicated for him. If life were a bit different, he muttered, his voice low, Maybe you and I would have met under different circumstances. The words hit me like cold water, and I shifted uncomfortably on the couch. What do you mean? I asked, forcing a nervous laugh. He smiled, but it wasn't the same friendly grin I'd grown used to. There was something knowing, almost wistful in it. Nothing, sweetheart. Just a thought. From that night on, I started keeping my distance. I avoided being alone with him, making excuses whenever mom asked me to run errands with him. But avoiding him entirely wasn't possible. He was part of the house, part of the family, part of everything. And then, on the night before I left for college, he said something I'll never forget. Daughter, dad waited for this day for a long time, he whispered, standing just behind me in the hallway. His voice was calm, but the words sent a chill down my spine. I didn't ask what he meant. I didn't want to know. I just nodded awkwardly, trying to hide the discomfort rising in my chest, and retreated to my room. College was supposed to be my fresh start, far away from the strange tension at home. And for a while, it was. I threw myself into my classes, made new friends, and tried to convince myself that whatever had happened with Sam was just my imagination running wild. I told myself that maybe he didn't mean anything by his words that night, and that leaving home had been the right decision. But Sam had a way of creeping back into my life. At first, it was through text messages, small, seemingly harmless ones. Just checking in, sweetheart. How's college life treating you? Or... Your mom and I miss you. I kept my replies brief. I wanted to keep my distance without stirring suspicion, but his messages never stopped. Then the calls began. Every week or two, he'd call under the guise of checking on me. How's my little girl holding up? He'd say. And the sound of his voice through the phone always made me feel trapped, as if the thousands of miles between us weren't enough. Even though his words were friendly, I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something lurking beneath them, like an undertone only I could hear. It was during winter break when things took a turn I hadn't prepared for. I'd planned to stay with a friend to avoid coming home, but mom insisted I visit, saying she missed me too much. And part of me felt guilty, like I was punishing her for something that wasn't her fault. So, 
Reluctantly, I packed my bags and returned. When I arrived, everything felt the same yet different. Mom greeted me warmly, but I could feel Sam's presence hanging in the air, like a shadow cast over the entire house. He acted perfectly normal, overly normal in fact, which only heightened my suspicion. The first few days went by without incident, and I started to think maybe I'd overreacted all along. But on the third night, while mom was out visiting a friend, I found myself alone with Sam again. We were in the kitchen, and I was making tea when he wandered in, casually leaning against the counter. It's good to have you back, he said, his eyes lingering on me the way they always had. Thanks, I muttered, focusing on the kettle, hoping the conversation would end there. But he didn't leave. He stepped closer, just enough to invade my space, but not enough to seem overtly inappropriate. You've grown up so much, you know, he said softly, like he was sharing a secret meant only for me. It's strange to think about it sometimes. I swallowed hard, feeling my chest tighten. Strange how? I asked cautiously, though part of me didn't want to know the answer. He smiled, an unsettling, almost wistful smile. Strange because... I feel like I missed out on knowing you properly. I became part of your life when you were already halfway grown. It's like we skipped something important. I didn't know how to respond, so I stayed silent. The kettle whistled, but I didn't move. Neither did he. You know, he said after a long pause, his voice barely above a whisper. There are moments when I think, just for a second, what if things were different? What if we didn't have these roles to play? You're not just a daughter, you're you. The air in the kitchen felt heavy, suffocating. I could feel my pulse quicken, my heart pounding in my chest. I forced a laugh, though it sounded awkward and hollow. That's kind of a weird thing to say, Sam. He shrugged, not breaking eye contact. Maybe, but it's the truth. And sometimes the truth is uncomfortable, isn't it? Before I could respond, the sound of the front door opening echoed through the house. Mom was back. The moment shattered like glass, and Sam stepped back, the tension dissipating as if it had never been there. I turned off the kettle and hurried out of the kitchen, my hands shaking slightly. But as I passed him, I felt his hand brush lightly against my arm, just enough to send a shiver down my spine. Good night, sweetheart, he whispered with a small, knowing smile. I spent the rest of winter break on edge, avoiding Sam as much as I could. I stayed in my room, pretended to be busy on my phone, and offered to run errands whenever mom needed something. But Sam had a way of being everywhere, always showing up when I least expected it. And when he did, there was always that same knowing look in his eyes, the same unsettling tension that I couldn't shake. Mom, of course, noticed nothing. To her, Sam was still the perfect husband, attentive and kind. She'd gush about how lucky we were to have him, how he'd taken on the role of a father with such grace. You're so lucky to have someone like Sam, she said one night while we were folding laundry together. He really loves you, you know? I nodded, forcing a smile, but the words made my skin crawl. The night before I was scheduled to head back to college, Sam found me in the living room again. This time, there was no avoiding him. Mom had already gone to bed, leaving just the two of us awake in the dimly lit room. I sat stiffly on the couch, scrolling through my phone, pretending not to notice him until he sat down beside me. I can't believe you're leaving already, he said, his voice soft and familiar. It feels like you just got here. Yeah, I muttered, keeping my eyes on my phone. Break went by fast. There was a long, heavy pause. I could feel his gaze on me, lingering in a way that made my skin prickle. I'll miss you, he said finally. I didn't respond. He leaned closer, just enough for me to catch the faint scent of his cologne. You know, he whispered. I've been thinking about what I said the other night, about missed moments. I swallowed hard, my throat suddenly dry. Sam, just hear me out. He interrupted, his voice low and insistent. I know it's not fair to say these things, but I can't help how I feel. There's something between us, isn't there? You feel it too, don't you? 
His words hung in the air like a dark cloud, suffocating and heavy. My mind raced, searching for a way out of the conversation, but I couldn't find one. I don't know what you're talking about, I said finally, my voice barely above a whisper. He gave me a sad smile as if he knew I was lying. You do, sweetheart. You've always known. The silence between us was unbearable. My heart pounded in my chest and I could feel a lump forming in my throat. I wanted to run, to get away from him and this twisted conversation, but my body felt frozen in place. You don't have to say anything, he said softly, his hand resting lightly on my knee. I just needed you to know how I feel. That's all. I stared at his hand, too stunned to move. His touch was light, almost innocent, but the weight of its meaning was anything but. And then, as if sensing he'd gone too far, he pulled away. I shouldn't have said anything, he muttered, running a hand through his hair. I'm sorry, I just... I've been holding it in for so long and I couldn't anymore. I stood up abruptly, my legs shaky beneath me. I need to go to bed, I whispered, my voice barely steady. He didn't stop me. He just sat there, watching as I fled to the safety of my room, his gaze following me like a shadow I couldn't escape. The morning of my departure was painfully quiet. I could feel the weight of the previous night pressing down on me as I packed my things. I avoided eye contact with Sam at breakfast, but I knew he was watching me, just like always. Mom was in high spirits, oblivious to the undercurrent in the room. She talked about plans for the next holiday, assuming I'd come home again. I forced a smile, pretending everything was normal, though my heart pounded in my chest with every passing moment. When the time came to leave, Mom hugged me tightly at the front door. Don't forget to call when you get there, she said, brushing a loose strand of hair from my face. I will, I promised returning her hug with more emotion than I'd intended. A part of me felt guilty, like I was leaving her to deal with something she didn't even know existed. Sam stood by the car, waiting to drive me to the bus station. I dreaded the thought of being alone with him one last time, but there was no way to refuse without raising suspicion. So, reluctantly, I slid into the passenger seat, feeling the walls close in as he shut the door behind me. The drive started in silence, the hum of the engine the only sound between us. I kept my eyes on the road ahead, praying the ride would be over quickly. About ten minutes in, Sam finally broke the silence. I need you to know something, he said, his voice quiet but firm. I tensed, gripping the strap of my bag tighter. What? He exhaled, as if gathering the courage to say what was on his mind. I meant what I said last night. I've waited a long time to tell you how I feel. Years, actually. But I don't expect anything from you, okay? I just needed you to know. His words hit me like a punch to the gut, and I fought to keep my breathing steady. Sam, this isn't right, I whispered, more to myself than to him. I know, he replied softly. But some feelings don't care about right or wrong. We pulled into the station parking lot, and I felt a surge of relief as I spotted the bus waiting nearby. I grabbed my bag and reached for the door handle, desperate to escape. But just as I opened the door, Sam's hand brushed mine. Wait, he said. I froze, unwilling to turn around, but his voice kept me in place. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable or scared, he said gently. I just, I care about you more than you know. And if things had been different, they aren't different. I interrupted, my voice sharper than I'd intended. And they never will be. He smiled, sad, resigned. I know, but I'll still be here waiting, just in case you ever change your mind. I stepped out of the car, my heart pounding in my chest. The cold air hit me like a slap to the face, and I breathed it in, grateful to be free of the suffocating tension inside the car. I climbed onto the bus without looking back, knowing that if I did, I might crumble under the weight of everything left unsaid. As the bus pulled away from the station, I stared out the window, watching the town shrink in the distance. I told myself I'd never go back, not while Sam was there. 
But a part of me knew that wasn't a promise I could keep forever. 